Hello everyone, I would like to show you a game that I played against one of my internet uh, acquaintances. We played on chess.com and we already played several games. He is quite a bit lower rated than me, but actually he plays a very good chess overall. So let's see, I was white and uh, I will just go quickly through the opening moves since uh, not much interesting happened there um, my friend gave me the center but somehow I didn't find a right plan to capitalize on it so after some play we arrived here and uh, I really didn't see a way forward so I was making some artificial moves but um, my friend he, he really he really played well this and uh, I didn't get any advantage and finally we got to this position and here as you can see I do have this nice pawn duo for quite some time already but uh, for some reason there is no way forward and uh, I saw that my rook is ready to join the attack on the king but there is a bishop and knight in the way and also this pawn is hindering this uh, this d3 bishop so I thought about playing e5 to open up the bishop but the problem is that it just gives the oops sorry the d5 square for black species so I went for the idea that was played in the 60s by Paul Gajewski in a similar position and that is to give up the d4 the d the d pawn and then push e5 and now the difference is that black has a pawn on d5 and this pawn is somewhat preventing his pieces to join the king side and actually now white is threatening to take on h7 and uh, what black should do is move one of his pawns according to the computer any of those moves are good but the best is probably h6 h6 so I, now i cannot sacrifice uh, on h7 there is nothing to capture there and uh, the sacrifice on h6 is not sound but my opponent played knight c4 which allowed me to go for this typical sacrifice with, with bishop takes h7 and uh, actually this is a winning combination but uh, I uh, failed to find uh, the winning moves with uh, good defense of my opponent so let's see king has to take and now after this check you cannot go back because then the queen comes in there is a big threat here and if you move the rook to make this square available then after these moves uh, checkmate is on the board so the king has to go up the board it cannot go to h6 because then after knight discovered check the queen will be picked up or even better knight double check so king g6 now I didn't like uh, this check because it blocks my rook so it cannot uh, join the attack so instead of that I first played rook h3 from b3 to h3 and now this rook is taking a lot of squares from the king and there is a threat of queen coming to h5 with devastating attack uh, so black has to do something and uh, uh, let's say let's say he, he, he goes here first uh, in order to oppose my rook well then I can go queen d3 check because now my rook is not here anymore but on the other side and after something like this I have this check if my rook was on b3 I couldn't do that so this is a much better version and here black is completely lost uh, but okay e5 was played and now uh, this knight is very strong so I don't want him there so I played f4 out but um, if it does move then a lot of bad things will happen to to black 
among others, uh, white queen can join the attack, followed by knight h7 or rook e1 first. It's just a very nice position. But my opponent found a very interesting move, rook h8, denying me the option of entering with the queen. But now I move the rook. Don't want to exchange those rooks. And now I have a threat. Knight e6, attacking the queen and attacking the king. So the queen moved from there. And here I missed the best move. The best move was knight e6, e6 discovered check. And after king f6, just taking here with the queen. Because now, as you can see, uh, the king is in check, so he has either to take the knight or the pawn. But if he does that, if he takes, let's say, the knight, then the queen comes to g4, and at the very least, I will win black's queen, and uh, the black king is not feeling safe, uh, still not feeling safe. It's just a bad position. But I failed to see that. I just thought, okay, I'll take this knight, and now there is a threat to discover this rook, and the queen will join, the rook will join, and I thought, I'm just going to mate my opponent. But wait a minute, my opponent is not such a weak player. He, he Actually, he is quite a good player. He found this move, f5. And what is the point of that move? Well, the point is that at the moment I cannot take Anpasan because my queen is unpre. So I have to go for this queen, but in the process I will lose both these pieces. And basically my attack will stop. Um, if I don't do, do that, he will just secure this pawn and uh, I just don't see any way forward. So. I went with knight e6. Still, the computer suggested rook f1 was somewhat better. But okay. I went for the queen. Uh, and uh, now, I did win the queen. But I gave a lot of material for it. So, black has a bishop and a rook. But we both have, for the queen, but we both have one extra pair of bishops, which gives black a lot of cover. He's covering both light squares and dark squares and also these two files are open and behind them is my king and these bishops they can very easily become very dangerous and according to computer white is still winning but i just didn't see the way forward so i gave this check with the idea to plant the bishop here but then i realized that's not such a good idea because once i put the bishop there he will just go rook g8 put the pressure here, open this long diagonal, and uh, I will not be in good position there. So, I went here, but actually, according to the engine, uh, queen wombs were better, either here, here, or here. Um, I didn't look very deeply into it, it's actually not so easy to understand it, because there is a lot of complex lines, it involves a lot of calculation, it's basically beyond my comprehension. Or I could maybe comprehend it, but I will have to invest hours and hours. So I, I went with the suboptimal move, rook f1. I wanted to put some pressure here, and I thought, okay, if bishop takes the pawn, I can always go back and win the bishop. So now this bishop it becomes really active. And uh, after these moves, I thought, okay, now I'm going to somehow combine the attack on f5 pawn with some checks and, so and, and eventually get my queen to b4. And I thought when I get this queen to b4, I will be threatening d6 and e7 squares. So something nice will happen there for me. But let's see what happened in the game. I started my plan attacking the f5 pawn and my opponent defended it. Then I gave a check and I again attacked just to... Oops, sorry. Uh, and uh, after a few moves I went to b4. And now I was thinking, okay, there is a threat of coming to d6, to e7 and just winning. Uh, 
but I didn't see that the c5 square can be taken by either bishop or rook. It's funny, but I just didn't see it. And uh, once that is done, there is no way for my queen to enter. So what uh, black should do here is uh, take that square with the bishop. And then there is just no way forward for me. But what happened here is my friend played rook c5, which looks very good. But actually, it is not a good move. And to tell you the truth, I never ever saw why this is a bad move. But it is just when I put this into an engine, the stockfish immediately gave me this move, which I would never consider. Uh, the point is, this rook is pinned. Because whenever it moves, the queen can either go to d6 and to e or to e7. And then either a mate will follow or this rook will fall. This bishop is also... Uh, defending uh, this guy so it cannot move and there is a threat just to push a5 and uh, uh, these two pieces are overloaded if the rook captures the pawn the queen will enter if the bishop captures the pawn the rook will be captured and you cannot go a5 yourself because then white just picks up the bishop so the only option is to go to c8 so when white pushes a5 black will be able to capture it and the rook is defending, defended. But now that the rook is no longer on h file, there is this maneuver. This one I found myself after just looking at a4. Uh, I didn't have to ask engine to help me with this one. So it's not 100% checked, but I think that this is the way to go. Because now the queen comes to h3 and all of a the sudden there is a the queen will just enter black's position and that is very dangerous because on the queen side there was no way to enter and now there is an option to enter to h6 followed by some nasty checks with the bishop or the pawn if it's not taken i think this is just winning but of course i didn't see any of that uh, during the game so i thought okay i'll just take this pawn if my opponent goes to c2, threatening here, well, then I will go to d6, and uh, it looked like this is just going to be checkmate here, or, or something very nasty. But I didn't see this thunder from the light sky. Actually, the sky was not so bright and light, but I just didn't have any sense of danger. My opponent played great move. Bishop g2, check. He reversed the order. He didn't play the rook down first, but first plays bishop g2. And now, after these moves, it turns out that my queen is under attack, my king is in check, so I have to give the queen. And um, all of a sudden, we are in an ending where I have a weak pawn, and um, it looks like that pawn is about to drop cannot be taken immediately because if you take it then white actually wins because of this nasty business I mean you can block but after these moves this doesn't look so great oh actually this is not a winning I, I have made a mistake but anyway this is not what black is aiming for so uh, what he did what he should do he should just give a check then this king has to move and then he can take the pawn but my opponent played rook d8, which is also good, attacking the bishop. And now, maybe the best is to go here, protect this guy with a very bad position, but hoping somehow to survive. But I didn't find that move. Instead, I went to c3. And uh, this could be punished by rook c8, because now the rook is uh, threatening to come to c2 and pick up this guy. But fortunately for me, Rook d3 was played, which is also good, but is less convincing than rook c8. And uh, I cannot really move this bishop. If I go to b2, then after the check, I lose the bishop. If I go to a1, after the check, I lose this pawn. And if I go anywhere else, I just lose this guy. So I had to protect it. But now a really good move by black, just blocking this, la this uh, rank and uh, saving the rook. 
and still attacking my bishop and I had to go here and after a few more moves uh, we arrived at this position I gave a check to you know I gave this pawn so I can get to the seventh rank and gain some activity and uh, this was taken with check and and I cannot go to f3 to try to win this pawn because of simple rook f2 winning the rook so I had to go to g3 and my position really looks bad I'm two pawns down two of them are connected one is very far advanced and uh, had my opponent play b5 this would just be a terrible position this pawn is dangerous this one cannot be won this one is very slow and uh, this is just lost but um, here I was a little bit lucky and, uh, and my friend played e2 which is still good but it gives me some chances very small chances but some chances so I have to protect that from winning and now rook b2 I started to push the pawn I have to generate some counterplay it's my only chance and uh, I'm trying to keep the rook uh, on one of these files to prevent this king from taking this pawn just yet and hoping that somehow I'm gonna do something with it so I replayed these moves and now I went here uh, saving the rook and blocking the advance of this pawn and here there is only one min winning move probably and that is to promote this pawn to any piece it doesn't really matter and the idea is to go back behind this pawn and there is a threat to take it and then to have two connected pawns that just wins but uh, white can save this guy but there is a problem this pawn is very far advanced and it will win the game so it's threatening to run it has to be blocked but now b5 a great move and uh, but this is not so easy to see but still this this is this was the only way to win after rook takes a3 rook a5 a2 and there is no way to stop promoting this pawn and then giving the check and picking up a rook or the other way around and this was the winning continuation here promoting the pawn and going back the, with the rook and then pushing this a pawn but it's not so easy to see and uh, my opponent played suboptimally and now actually the position is equal even though uh, black is two pawns up um, this is just a draw after because this pawn will generate enough counterplay black will have to give up this guy for this and then white will have time to pick up one of these pawns and then one pawn cannot win in a rook game when the king is in front of the pawn so uh, here this move was played at the moment of the game i thought that this was a mistake but actually uh, there was no way for black to win here so it doesn't really matter what uh, you see now this pawn will drop but there is a problem White uses that pawn to give this check and pick up here, and this is just a dead draw. And uh, here we actually played until we only had kings left. Well, th this was quite a game, and let me tell you something. Uh, my friend, he has something like uh, 600 rating points less than me, somewhere in that range, but... Um, he really played this game amazingly. We both made some mistakes, but of course we are not grandmasters, masters or anything. Even they make mistakes, but I think uh, both of us, we played um, really interesting chess with a lot of mistakes and produced these really, really nice games. I hope you have liked it. It's a little bit longer video, but I think these games, this game has deserved it. Thank you for watching this video and uh, see you soon.